Good morning, New Covenant World. Peace, love, joy, and honour to all of you. The second exodus, our final destination. I know in the previous video I've uh, asked a question about um, the second um, exodus and asking the question, have the wilderness years come to an end? And thank, and thank you to uh, Brother Ambrose A. Belair, uh, who helped clarify and uh, answer that question. And we thank you for the value of that, what you shared with us, and those who uh, have also commented. But our final destination, we, we also need to discuss the crossing at the Red Sea which is also important. Remember the type and shadow of, of Exodus story uh, for us in uh, the final generations, the final ages. And we know that God hardened, hardened the hearts of Egypt, which was the type and shadow of the world. And just as Egypt came against is natural Israel, the world will come against spiritual Israel, at the end. And we know spiritual Israel is in slavery and bondage to the world and in sin and to sin. So deliverance is needed. So if, if we can um, look at the Exodus story and we'll get draw some conclusions and understanding about our journey and our final destination. And Moses declared, stand firm and you will see the Lord's salvation, he told the people of Israel. After uh, the father had revealed to him uh, what was to happen. And in like manner, Jesus declared to stand firm and you will see salvation. The pillar of cloud going be uh, go the pillar of cloud going behind the people. Sorry, the fire by night and the pillar of, of cloud leading the people, as well as the angel, uh, could possibly have been Jesus, who led them to cross the Red Sea. And we notice it says they went behind the people when they got to the Red Sea. Uh, and they were no longer leading them. They they left the front and went to the back. And there must be a purpose and a reason for that. And maybe that was God was looking to see who would cross <coughs> the Red Sea in faith alone. Uh, which is which is an interesting way of looking at it. Um, whether that's correct, I don't know. But that is one w way of looking at it. So Moses, Moses parts the Red Sea, <coughs> the natural sea, and the certain light way, like manner, Jesus parts the sea of mankind uh, to reveal the truth for all to cross over into. And God caused confusion among the Egyptian army in this like manner. God will cause confusion to all that come against God's people. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, the world will become confused as to what is happening to uh, the body of Christ. As we cross over and are delivered from bondage and sin. The crossover... Uh, and the sea returns after they cross over. And, uh, and this could possibly be the commotion once again from the world uh, as to what is happening with this, this group of people in the earth. Those whose hope is in Christ as they cross over into uh, the spiritual paradise. Or into the revealed truth 
for all truth. Israel crossed over on dry land. It was firm, solid ground. And likewise, we cross over, or we can only cross over, on a solid foundation. Israel entered the promised land with the song of deliverance. Now Israel had been living amongst false gods. They multiplied. And this is why the Egyptians became worried about their numbers growing. So they needed to be... So the Egyptians put the uh, Israel into slavery and tried to keep the numbers down. Uh, and in the first exodus we learned of their struggle their salvation and deliverance from slavery and affliction. We also saw the introduction of the covenant with Yahweh. And we also, they, it was also revealed they were a chosen people. And the law was given to them during the wilderness. Um, and the promise to enter into a land of flowing, a land flowing with milk and honey. So they got the promise. They got the deliverance, the salvation, the covenant, the law, all those things in Exodus in their journey uh, into the land flowing with milk and honey. And so too, in like manner, spiritual Israel will experience the salvation and deliverance from slavery, affliction, from sin and deliverance from the world when it comes against them. And we've also been introduced to the new covenant in which all can enter in through Christ. And also in Exodus, God revealed to Moses who he is. I am who I am, he said. And then the same I am as in the book of Revelation. And possibly the two witnesses in that Exodus story were Moses and Aaron. Deliverance came from judgment upon the oppressors. The relevance of midnight when God executed his judgment with the slaying of the firstborn of the Egyptians Heartache and anguish became the best friend of the Egyptian people. Uh, and as I say, the relevance of midnight, I don't know if that has any re relevance to us. I think it will do. Someone might be able to explain that better. So here we have the, the world, as in Egypt were in heartache and anguish at the loss of their son and the afflictions that were returned back upon them that they had put upon his people. And this is what God will do when he executes his judgment on behalf of his people in the end times. And it was in the month of Abib when deliverance came. Israel would totally give glory for their deliverance. And God leads them, led them in the wilderness to the Red Sea, led by a, a pillar uh, of cloud by day, which I believe is Jesus, and a fire by night, which is the Holy Spirit. So there we have them, their, their deliverance and their journey to the Red Sea. So they come to the Red Sea and Moses parts the waves. And they cross on firm, firm land, just as we cross over on a solid foundation they cross the Red Sea on a solid foundation they cross in faith because there was no one leading them when they crossed over which may have some relevance for us they were expected to cross over through faith of course which they did and, there, and once they crossed over there was great rejoicing amongst the people and of course, we, when, we, when we enter into Christ, when we cross over <coughs> into all truth, when it's revealed that 
the man child the full revealing of Christ in us there will be rejoicing and our deliverance will be complete the world will sink in the sand as they try to cross over just as the Egyptian soldiers try to cross over they try to follow uh, Israel across the la across the part at sea but of course as we know in the, in the story they couldn't do because they weren't <laughs> they weren't built on a solid foundation just as the world isn't built on a solid foundation and they must have been dumbfounded and, and astounded and great fear came upon them as they saw they witnessed God's judgment judgment upon them and of course the world will be dumbfounded when they see what's happening to God's people when the fullness of time comes and it will be revealed to them that judgment is upon those who have not entered in through Christ they have sought a false light a false identity, a false vision, a false future for themselves in their own fleshy way. They haven't done it through Christ. And just as natural Israel entered the promised land through, God, through God's ways, the leading of God, the direction of God, we will enter in through Christ who is leading us. The light of man is fake. And when the shaking occurs, which I believe is happening, they will crumble. And this an anger will come, along with anguish and heartache, to the world. But God's people will stand firm on the rock when they come against God's people. They will be unshakable in that period of time. And they will stand firm the rock and declare the glory of God for their deliverance. From the Red Sea, ironically, Israel entered a desert after they crossed over, which is interesting, a desert with bitter waters. So that must be, once they had been delivered, they'd entered into a time of testing before they could complete that journey. And I think God in his wisdom and foresight saw that they didn't appreciate what he'd done for them. And many would start complaining and moaning, which we found out about. And so many didn't finish the journey. And we also know on that journey, 3,000 were sacri sacrificed were killed but we're also we know in the new covenant 3,000 were saved in one day the same number make of that what you like and so we must end into our, the fi our final destination with tribulation during our deliverance to finish that journey into the kingdom of God crossing of the symbolic Red Sea on a firm, firm, on a firm foundation, which can only be done through the Lord Jesus Christ, and the world will not be able to enter in because they refuse to come to Christ in the same way as uh, Exodus. They wanted to cross the Red Sea without God's direction or leading or submitting to God's will, and just the same way the world will do the same and come against God's people when they see their deliverance, when they see their joy and glory and see that they are in Christ and Christ is in them. In God's own time, in God's own way, we will see it and we will glorify God. Mm -hmm.